Here, I'm holding on to IBM's quantum processor. The qubits are on this silicon chip that is mounted on the pr printed circuit board. So what is a qubit? Qubit is a quantum two-level system that you can address using external controls. Analogous to having classical bit, you can have two discrete quantum energy levels as your quantum zero and one state. So let's see what this device looks like. Here, we have five superconducting qubits. Each qubit consists of Josephson junction shunted by a large capacitor. You can think of this circuit as a nonlinear LC oscillator, and the nonlinearity comes from the junction inductance. It is important to have this nonlinear element because without it, the energy levels are equally spaced. By engineering the superconducting circuit, you can make them behave like uh, artificial atoms. So we use the lowest two energy levels of this artificial atom as our zero and one state. So how do we control and measure these qubits? We measure the qubit by coupling the qubit to a superconducting transmission line resonator. You can engineer the circuit such that the readout resonator frequency depends on the state of the qubit. By probing the resonant frequency, you can determine if the qubit is in the zero or the one state. And then now, how do you control them? Our typical superconducting qubit frequencies are around four to six gigahertz. So by applying a microwave tone at the qubit frequency, you can drive the qubit. And also by applying a pulse shape to the microwave tone, you can apply quantum gates. So finally, how are they coupled? To run a two qubit entangling gate, you need to have some sort of coupling between a pair of qubits. You can couple them capacitively directly, but we like to use another superconducting transmission line resonator so that we can control the coupling well. So here, you see that you have more than one qubits on the bus, so these qubits are coupled. You could also have multiple buses on a qubit. It is important where these buses are, because this determines which pairs of qubit you can run entangling gates. In making a quantum processor, not only do you need a good coherent qubit, but you also need the ability to control and measure the state of the qubit. You also need more than one qubit and a way to couple these qubits. Now you know what this IBM 5-qubit quantum processor looks like.